As an artist and cartoonist, nothing inspires me more than the designs of nature. Hi, I'm Ostein Christensen. In this DVD, I'll show you how to draw some of nature's special creatures using a variety of Faber-Castell drawing and coloring products. So all aboard! Let's get this show on the road! If you want to study animals around the world, you can either go on a world safari or you can just visit a zoo like me. I'm in the famous Singapore Zoo, set in the middle of a rainforest, so it's one of the greenest zoos there is. Here I can get really up close to the animals and practice my drawing as much as I like. As a cartoonist, I draw a lot of funny animals doing crazy things. But I still have to study the real animal first, so that I understand it better and can draw my cartoons better. I always make sure I sign and date my drawings and collect them all in folders. That way I can see how I get better over time. And as always, the more you practice, the better you get. When you watch this DVD, make sure you got all your art materials ready so that we can do the drawings together. Just follow my step-by-step -step instructions and push the pause button if you need more time to complete each step. If you repeat each animal several times, you'll find that it gets easier and easier and your drawings look better and better. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with an anteater. I start with a circle, then I draw a curvy line over the top. The left side becomes the tail and the right side becomes the snout. Then I add on the eyes and the legs. The anteater is also quite bushy and furry. From the long thin snout sticks a long thin tongue. It uses the tongue to find ants way into the underground corridors where the ants live. Then I draw the characteristic white stripe across the body. And now I'm ready to add the shading. First I add an even grey to the whole animal. I use a soft 2B pencil and I hold it far from the tip so that I can move it freer and faster for efficient shading. Next, I draw a few little unlucky ants that got stuck onto the sticky tongue of the anteater. Then I add a shadow on the ground. And a few rocks and texture to the ground. I think I'll even add in some termite mounds in the background with a whole bunch of delicious termites crawling around. Mmm, an anteater's favorite dessert. Finally, I draw my signature, this time in the form of a sun. A 
Yes, folks, here it is. An ant's worst nightmare. Oh, mm, tasty ants. <laughs> Guess where I am now? I'm deep in the jungles of Sumatra. And I've got hold of a big branch of bananas. Now, it's a fact that I love bananas, but this time the bananas is not for me. It's for the other monkeys. I'll start drawing some monkeys to see if they appreciate art. Then I can feed them some bananas while they admire me. Monkeys come in all kinds of looks, shapes and forms. Okay monkeys, come to Uncle Einstein and get fresh bananas and a portrait if you sit still and don't monkey around. So guys, what do you think of my monkey art? Any good? Hey, hey, don't take my pencils, I need them to draw. Ah, so that's why you came to see me. You're not interested in my cartoons, you're just after my Faber-Castell pencils, so that you can draw the cartoons yourself. Well, I don't blame you, after all, they are the world's best. Well, time for me to say goodbye to my monkey friends. Keep drawing guys, now that you got pencils, bye! Here's a funny way of drawing a chimpanzee. Start with a big sweep like this. In the middle of the sweep, draw a box-like shape, curving a bit to the left, like this. Then two small circles, one overlapping a bit into the other. Now you have a body, a head and two long arms. Onto the head I draw ears. And inside the head, two eyes. Then I cut the lower circle in half, and that's the mouth. Next I put in teeth, and then I open up the mouth. And look, a tongue sticking out! How funny! At each corner of the body shape, I draw the short legs and the long toes. Oh, I think I drew the right leg a bit too far down. But that's no problem, I'll fix that with my Faber-Castell eraser. I'll move the leg higher up. Oh yes, that's better. I add an extra toe to each foot. A chimpanzee has five fingers and toes, just like us people. But for simplicity's sake, in my cartoons, I usually reduce them to three or four. Then I give the upper arm a hand and a jungle liana to swing from. I thicken up the other arm too and give it a big hand with four fingers and a really, really big banana. That'll make it happy. The next step is to firm up all the black lines and add the black fur to the chimp. Then before I firm up the lines on the face, I want to erase some unwanted sketch lines.
When they are gone, I sharpen my pencil well, and then I'm ready to draw in the fine details of the chimp's face. In order to draw really well, you need to be patient with the drawing and take the time you need to do a good job. You need to enjoy seeing the cartoon grow into life on the paper. If you want to get a strong, solid color effect, you need to work the pencil into the paper. Since the chimp's body is so dark, I keep all the other colors light. A good drawing should have a nice mix of dark and light colors. That way you get contrast and brilliance into it. The banana gets a little bit of orange shadow before I move on to the background. I start with scribbling green color around the chimp. Then I grab a dark green pencil and draw in some big leafy jungle ferns. The background is actually very easy to draw. It's mostly a big porridge of different greens. Lastly, I strengthen up all the black lines, so that my chimp looks strong and solid. Okay, now it's your time to try. Draw a chimpanzee. And now for the polar bears. This is one powerful animal you just have to learn how to draw. The polar bear is the biggest of all bears and can weigh up to 600 kg. As a native to the Arctic, it is covered in thick white fur to keep it warm and the huge body is streamlined to make it an excellent swimmer. Just look at how he bounces around in the water. This is a great opportunity for me to study this animal up close. And with studying, I mean drawing of course. I start with drawing it with the shape of a droplet. You can imagine that it can move around fast in the water with a shape like that. At the pointy end I put a nose and a pair of eyes. Under there I add a big smile. Then two small rounded ears. A small little tail. And then I move on to the legs. I make the legs thicker at the feet, because the fur gives the impression that the feet are very thick and solid. Just notice these proportions. The last leg you don't see much of, because it's hidden behind the other side of the body.
Now I start firming up the lines using the same blue pencil. I put a sheet of paper under my hand so I don't smudge the lines that I have already drawn. As I move along I add little shadows here and there, like behind the eye and inside the ear. I put in a tongue Then I draw teeth Then I draw the line that defines the inside of the mouth Before I start on the fur texture, I sharpen my pencil well. It's important to keep a sharp pencil when you do fine line work like this. I do a ziggy saggy line for the fur. That's all you really need to give it a furry impression. Then I define the toes on the big paws and make the foot round and soft looking. The fourth leg that are behind the others is in shade, so I color it blue. I continue to add on the toes and adding the fur. Next, I want to add on the shading. Imagine that the sun shines from this direction. Then the shading would end up on the opposite side. So I put it on in sketchy lines until the body looks nice and rounded and three-dimensional. Then I add just a little bit of pink. Now I'm ready for the background. I first outline an ice flake. Then I draw the sides of the flake and then the waterline.
Next, I draw the reflection of the ice flake in the water. The water reflects it just like a mirror. First, I color in the water around the reflection. Then, I shade a bit on the side of the ice flake to separate it from the top side. Then, when I start coloring the reflection in the water, I color horizontally with a few stripes here and there to imitate ripples in the water. Next, I color the shadow under the polar bear and some icebergs in the background. In order to make the icebergs stand out and look white, I need to color in a bit of blue sky behind it. At the end, I put in a little happy fish, because I know how much polar bears appreciate fish. Just look at the happy, hungry smile of the polar bear. Finally, I erase away any unwanted lines. Well, that was yet another drawing done. Okay folks, make yourself happy. Grab a pencil and get going on your very own polar bear. Hey, a cute little baby rhino. And it's only a few months old. Yeah, the Singapore Zoo sure have a few nice surprises. And do you know what? I love drawing them. They have so much personality in their faces. Their bulky bodies and strange features makes them a treat for a cartoonist and caricaturist like me. Notice that I draw the rhinos from a few different angles in order to understand them better. And hey, here's some art fans too! Well guys, next time you come to the zoo, bring your pencils. Bye! Okay, are you ready for this huge prehistoric challenge? If yes, Draw the circle and let's get going. From the circle of body, I draw the head. The head points downwards and is a bit box-like in the shape. Notice that it is broader below than on top. Then I draw the lower lip and the upper lip. If you study rhinos, you will find that their lips are a prominent part of their looks. Then I draw the eyes and I make them a bit angry because the rhinos are known to be quite aggressive. Then I move on to the legs. They are thick and strong, kind of like tree trunks. The nostrils are also very important in order to give the rhino a rough and tough look. 
<laughs> and not to forget the horns. They are the most outstanding feature on the Rhino. One big one and one small one. Next I draw the foundations for the ears and then the ears themselves on top. Then toenails and the tail. Now that the basic outline is done, I can go in and firm up some details like the angry eyes, nostrils and ears. I start with an even layer of grey all over the rhino's body. That's the overall skin tone. Notice how I hold my pencil. I hold it quite far away from the tip. Imagine that the light is coming in from the top left. Then the shading will appear on the opposite side, the lower right. When I want to do smaller shadows, I shift my grip to hold the pencil a bit closer to the tip. In short, you can say that you hold the pencil close to the tip for details and far from the tip for broad strokes. I keep on working on the shading until the Rhino looks suitably 3D. Then I move on to strengthening the outline. Now here is a thing to pay attention to. Since the light is coming from the top left, it will bounce off the ground and hit the rhino back from below. So now we get a lighter area along the bottom. So the darkest shadow is actually right here along the lower right side of the rhino's body. Finally I add the cast shadow under the rhino. Now it looks as if the rhino is standing on something solid and not floating about in mid-air. Okay, looks like I finished another masterpiece. Do you feel like giving it a go? <laughs> Big horns and all. Well, you think about it while I prepare myself to go to Indonesia. Ah, a huge crazy gorilla. It can only mean one thing. I'm in the Jakarta Zoo in Java, Indonesia. This country has huge forests spread over several thousand islands and it's one of the animal richest places on earth. As a dedicated elephant fan, I've decided to get a job here as an elephant keeper. Hey, stay off my broom, naughty elephant. You can eat these bananas instead. In fact, I'll have one myself. Here's some stuff the elephant left behind. I wonder what it is. Ugh, smells fantastic. Yeah. It's a rough job looking after elephants, but somebody got to do it. Now don't get me wrong people, although I love tidying up after elephants, my real passion is to draw them. Whenever I have a live animal near me, my drawing fingers are itching for action. And elephants happens to be one of my top favorite subjects. I study every detail. It's funny how you look at things differently when you're holding a pencil in your hand. 
the world around you becomes full of fascinating possibilities. As you can probably tell, I'm not in the zoo anymore. I've moved up to another Indonesian island called Sumatra. Here, there are beautiful jungles with cool rivers that the elephants love to swim in. Okay, big boy, what do you think of my portrait of your trunk? Can you recognize yourself? If you don't like it, please don't sit on me. I have more drawings to do, okay? I've just shown you a way to draw elephants. But there are many ways to draw elephants. So grab a connector pen and I will show you another one. I start with a simple squiggle. Then I imagine that the squiggle is the elephant's trunk. So all I got to do is to draw the mouth and the body around the mouth. The eyes. And now I'm ready to make the squiggle into the elephant's trunk. So I just follow the same squiggle line all the way back. Next I add the ears and the tusk. Then comes the arms and legs with little nails. At the back I draw a tail and up by the mouth I draw a line to mark the inside of the mouth. And in there I draw a tongue. Then I use the same pen to fill in the darks. Now I'm ready to color and I feel like a vibrant pattern this time. I use a color pencil to come up with some irregular pink shapes. Ha ha ha! The elephant will end up looking like an old curtain! In the middle of the shape, I draw a darker shape using a purple pencil. Now the pattern is looking even brighter. Then I color the tongue. And a little bit of light blue in the background. The background color makes the white on the elephant stand out a bit more. Finally, some action lines to show how the elephant moves. Ah, yet another drawing done. Well, now you know how you can draw a funny elephant. Just start with a squiggle. Yep, I'm quite happy with my squiggle elephant. But did you know that there are other animals with long trunk-like snouts as well? Take the tapir for instance. They are wonderful forest animals that have a long snout that can move in all directions, just like elephants.
Tapirs feed on fruit, berries and leaves, and loves water. They love to swim and hang out in the rain. That's why I can get such a good look at them now, because it's raining. Their round bodies, long snouts and black and white patterns makes them really appealing to me as a cartoonist. Talking about cartoons, let me show you an easy way to draw a tapir. First draw a circle. Then pay close attention to the lines that I'm drawing. First a curved line out. Then another curved line. Can you now start to see the smile of the tapir? Then I connect the lines to the body. And as soon as I have put the eyes on top, the friendly facial expression is looking right at you. Next, I draw the soft round snout. And out from the mouth comes the tongue. A few wrinkles and then the ears. The next step is to add the legs. Notice that I curve them slightly and I make them thicker by the foot. Do you see the difference? Then I add the round feet before I draw in the last leg which is in shade. Then I go on to strengthen the lines a bit. The tapir also has a tiny little tail. Now it's time for coloring. First I draw the lines that separate the white areas from the black. Then I fill in the black color. Notice that I leave a little bit of white by each wrinkle on the snout. That way it looks more three-dimensional. When I'm done with the black, I color in the pink on the ears, mouth, and tongue. Now how about a little baby tapir? Then the big one could be the mother. The baby's body shape look just like the mothers, only smaller.
The biggest difference of the two is that the baby has a much more complex pattern. It's full of stripes and dots. Try to copy how I'm drawing it here. Then I start on the background. For the forest floor, I hold my pencil far from the tip in order to sketch fast with broad strokes. I color in a mix of a few colors. The forest is never just one color, it's always a mix of many different colors. The forest behind the top here is is soft green and light. That way the dark top here stands out well. Then I sketch in a few big ferns. And jungle grass. To me, that always gives a nice jungle feel. In order to give the forest a warm sunny feel, I color a layer of yellow all over it. Then I add some shading to the two tapirs using the same light color as the forest. You see the shadows picks up color from its surroundings. Next I strengthen all the lines so that the tapir looks more solid. This is the detail stage where I check that everything is the way I like it to be on the drawing. I add in little shadows here and there, or darken certain colors if I need to. Finally, my signature. It's important that you sign all your drawings and keep them in a safe place. Yeah, the tapir sure is a funny looking animal. <laughs> and now let's move up into the trees. Bats are fascinating creatures. They sleep during the day, fly during the night, and they can hang upside down for hours without getting a headache. This particular bat is a Malayan flying fox. And its favorite food is a bit like mine, fruits. It likes to hang out in the treetops, eating as much fruits as possible, and flushing it down with some nectar. The Malayan flying foxes are amongst the biggest bats you can find and can have a wingspan of up to six feet. Its natural home is Southeast Asia, 
so it seems to be very comfortable here in the Singapore Zoo. And look at its appetite! It can eat half its own body weight every day. This fantastic mammal is a treat to draw and it's exciting to be able to study it so up close. Next, I'm going to show you how to draw a bat simple and easy. I begin with a small circle. The reason why it's small is so that I have space for the large wings. Then I draw the cheeky eyes, nostrils and a big mouth with fangs. Out from the mouth comes a long pointy tongue. The bat has the longest tongue of all mammals compared to its body size. Next I draw the large pointy ears. And now I'm ready for the large wings. I will show you slowly step by step how I draw the wings, so please pay close attention. There, that wasn't too difficult, right? Then I continue with the legs and claws. Time to color it up. And I start with the same black pencil as I use for the outline. I color in the top half of the wings and body and leave the rest white. After that, I grab a reddish brown pencil and color in the rest of the wings and body. Inside the mouth, I color completely black. And the tongue is bright red. Except for a little yellow spot at the top. This is to lighten it up before it goes into the dark mouth. The eyes gets the same yellow color. Now I warm up and enrich the brown color by giving it an extra hard rub of orange. Then I get my black pencil out again and color the black areas solid black. When I get to the area on the wings where the black blends into the brown, I use a blending technique where I move my pencil in little circles, pressing lighter when I want to lighten the color. Next I start firming up the outlines using the same black pencil.
When that's done, I remove any unwanted sketch line with my dust-free eraser. Okay, time for some background. Since the bat is a night animal, I draw the moon and some stars with a yellow pencil. Then I fill in the light night blue around them. Bats fly over the jungle at night, eating their favorite food. Insects. Ooh, yummy. Blech. So I draw in a little jungle below. Then I add in some food for the bat. Finally, I sign the drawing and I'm done. You know, some find bats quite scary animals. But look, bats are cute. I'm the scary one. <laughs> And now for one of the funniest animals in the whole world, the hippo. This particular hippo is a pygmy hippo from Western Africa. The pygmy hippo loves water and lives in rainforests and swamps. And although we call them pygmy hippos, it doesn't mean that they're small. They can weigh up to 275 kilos. That's almost four times my weight. Just look at this cute and chubby animal. I don't know about you, but I love to draw round and chubby animals like cows, elephants, rhinos and hippos of course. Here is how to draw a water loving hippo the easy way. I grab a connector pen and start with a medium sized circle. Then half a circle on top and a big circle below. I draw the eyes in the half a circle. Then nostrils in the medium circle. Next I draw the base for the ears, followed by the rounded ears themselves. And now I'm moving on to something very exciting. The big hippo mouth. Notice how I simply add it on below the nose. Then I add the arms and legs. And the nails. Then it's time to fill in some color. First the dark areas like the inside of the mouth and nostrils. Then I go for brighter colors. Let's see. If I give this hippo big pink lips, then it means that it's a female hippo. <laughs> Maybe I should give her a bikini too. And have about red nails. Then I grab a grey color pencil and color up her body. 
The reason for switching to a color pencil is that I want a soft look. Basically, I use markers for bright, flat colors and pencils for soft, graduated color. Okay, now let's have some sunshine. But where there is sun, there is also shadow. Like under her jaw, for instance. And a bit on her arms. And legs. And a little bit inside the air. And now for the water. Wow, she's making a big splash. I color in a bit of light blue, leaving a white rim at the top. Then some darker blue. And I'm ready to sign. Hey, <laughs> hey! That's 500 kilo of water-loving hippo for you. <laughs> well, time for me to pack up and go home to my art studio. I have worked really hard today and I hope you picked up a few good tips on animal drawing. Happy drawing! If you're inspired by drawing like I am and would like to learn more, Look out for these DVD and book sets also available. Drawing Aussie animals with connector pens. Drawing sea creatures with watercolor pencils. Drawing animals around the world with color pencils and connector pens. Visit the Faber-Castell or Einstein's website for more details www.faber-castell.com.au Hi, I'm Einstein Christensen, and I am from the frozen country of Norway, the home of the Vikings. All my life I have been drawing, doodling and using my imagination. As a child, I was so fascinated by pencils, I just couldn't stop drawing. At school, I drew for all my subjects and made funny caricatures of my teachers. No wonder I ended up as a professional artist. In my career, I have been a newspaper cartoonist, illustrator, caricaturist, painter and designer, always trusting my pencil and my imagination. Nowadays, I make TV shows and books and travel all around the world, inspiring people to draw and use their imagination. 